Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Advanced Bass Fishing and thank you very much for uh, joining me today for this week's video. We're going to be talking about big swim baits, guys. Um, this particular genre of swim baits that we're talking about here are the large sizes, the six inch and up size. I've got the, I got everything from six inch to 10 inch that we're going to talk about today. Um, and it's probably, if you guys want to catch a giant bass, this is probably the best video you're going to see on it because this video is all about catching big bass on big swim baits. So we're going to get into that. And um, a couple different things before we get started here, guys, a couple housekeeping tips. I just want to thank everybody for supporting the new channel here. The channel's really grown good. It seems like everybody likes this longer sem seminar f format that we're doing. And I really appreciate you guys helping, helping me get it off the ground because it's doing really good. And also guys, um, before uh, we also before we get started, I just wanna invite everybody to please check out um, all the links in the description of this video. Um, these are long videos and if you guys like the content and you appreciate you know the content here and you wanna give something back to the channel, using those links uh, to order some of the products is a really good way to do it because the channel gets a small percentage of those sales, whether it be you know ordering stuff through Baitworks or getting a, a lake map breakdown from Fish the Moment, just everything in the, the uh, links there is, is designed to help the channel, so much appreciated with that. Okay guys, what we're gonna do here, and I have a little bit uh, about moving forward beyond this one, um, we're gonna be doing a lot of videos in the future on swim baits. Um, today's video is just on the large swim baits, but we're gonna be doing videos on the medium size and the small size, and then eventually, well, I'm gonna try to get out on the water a little bit, you know, show you some stuff on that, and then we'll talk about the seasonal applications of each one of those size genres in future videos down the road. But what I wanted to do today is I want to show you my selection of big swim baits, <clears throat> the ones that I use, the ones that's been successful for me. And I'm going to go into those a little bit, explain a little bit about behind them, and then we're going to deep dive and we're going to go into detail about how to fish them and where to fish them. Because how to fish them and where to fish them under those conditions is the key to getting bit on this lure genre right here. It's a, it's a completely different type of fishing than any other type of fishing. I mean, this is, when you're talking big swim baits, guys, these are big chunks of, of plastic. And one of the things that we're gonna get into in this video, and one of the things that I wanna let you guys know before we get started with the big swim bait fishing, is that when you talk about fishing big swim baits and you consider doing it, I don't know how many guys have or have not, but it requires a shift in your mentality. Um, this is not a lure category that you're going to get a lot of bites on. <clears throat> not to say that you can't get a significant number of bites because some of the smaller six inch size, which is still a big bait, um, I've caught you know good numbers on them before. But for the most part, when you consider or want to get good at fishing big swim baits, you have to chal or you have to discipline your mind to thinking that I'm simply not gonna get many bites and I've got to make a commitment. And commitment is the key word when you're talking about big swim baits because you have got to commit to the technique. If you don't commit to the technique, you're never gonna catch any fish or never gonna get any good on a, on a big swim bait because I think, and I'm, you guys may you know, uh, you know, interject this or put some comments in there, but I believe that the majority of the bass anglers in this country have never caught a bass on a big swim bait. Now they hear about a lot of them, a lot of people are intrigued by them and they're fascinated by them, but in a real world application, very few people have actually caught fish on it. And that's, that's what I wanna help out here. I wanna help you guys catch, start catching fish on these things because it's a really good way to catch giant bass about anywhere you go. So we're gonna to get into that aspect there. But anyway, we're gonna break it down into a lot of different areas in today's video. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over with you the swim baits that I use. And I wanna explain a little bit about each one of these swim baits and the situation that uh, they work in and a little bit about how to work them, you know, how to manipulate them and that type of stuff, the, the, the equipment tackle we get into. So what I want to do here is I want to start with the smallest sizes and then I'm going to go up to the biggest sizes. So the first one we're going to talk about, and also guys, um, all these baits that I'm showing here with the exception, I think one bait, 
you can get them all at Baitworks in Springfield. I'll put that link is in the description too. The first one we're going to talk about, guys, is probably the one everybody or most people are common with if you bass fish. It's the six inch mag draft. Guys, this particular bait right here is really to a large degree what has put big swim bait fishing on the map. This has been a tremendously successful bait as far as in the tournament realm over the past five or six years. A lot of pros use it. A lot of guys use it on a regional and local level. The thing about this thing that makes it good is it's a large bait, yet it's also small enough to, to attract two pound fish. I mean, I've caught a lot of two pound fish on this particular bait. And um, I wanna explain a little bit about the how the mag draft is set up and it's the same on all the sizes here but if you're not familiar with it guys the mag draft has got a, a single treble hook connected with a, a, a barrel swivel there and there's a magnet inside of the belly there that keeps the, the the hook attached to the belly and there's also a slit and you want to take one of the barbs and you put it in that slit and it rides like that through the water um, and surprisingly I don't miss a lot of fish on this. Sometimes we'll talk a little bit about the mood and the personality, but when I first saw this, I was a little bit hesitant just having two hooks there, but the hook rate hookup on this particular bait is, is really good for some reason. It works really good with that. Um, but this is the, uh, the six inch model here like this. It's, it's uh, uh, probably the most versatile size with that. This is the first one I use. Now the second one I use, this one right here is a uh, six inch Kitek. This is the biggest swim bait that Kitek makes right here. Um, this is a little bit different profile. This is a rib swim bait, um, full salt, that type of stuff. So it doesn't really look like a fish. It's got a different profile. But um, this particular thing right here, this has been one of my top lures um, anytime I'm fishing grass. I mean, for whatever reason, this big giant swim bait, if I'm fishing over submergent hydrilla, submergent uh, milfoil, you know, any, any stuff like that, reeling this thing, you know, just slowly through the water column, just above the top of that grass. Guys, I've caught some giants on it. And um, most of the time I fish it just on an open jig head. Now I've changed up a little bit ever since they came out with the, uh, the tush head, core tackle tush head right here. Um, this is the, the, the rig that I have with it because it, it makes the, uh, the lead head invisible, but it's pretty simple. I'm just going to show you how to rig it here. Just come right through the middle, and you can get these tush heads at bait works too. This bait right here, Kitek guys, is really a popular swim bait. Every you know, it's probably the most popular swim bait, but very few people use this largest size, this big giant one here. So this is what it looks like right here, and this thing has got a real wide waggling tail. So when I'm using this thing right here, we're talking in terms of fishing over grass right there. It's been an outstanding bait for that. And we're gonna get into the grass a little bit more. Now the next one guys is the upsize. We're gonna go to the eight inch Mega Bass Mag Draft. Now this is the larger size. Here's a size comparison between the two, um, just like that. And we're gonna get into a little bit about when you wanna fish each particular size in a second. But the same deal, guys, this is just, it's the exact same as the six inch as far as the hook in it and everything. It's just a larger profile. And then uh, finally, then you have the 10 inch mama here. This is the freaking giant one here. And compared to the six inch, this is the size. So we're gonna get in, we're gonna talk a little bit about when you wanna use these particular sizes because the size is the key. And then one final one, guys, that I'm gonna talk about a little bit is this Mega Bait Charlie. This is an old, one of the, original swim baits. I do consider this a swim bait and not a glide bait because it's a plastic body. <coughs> Excuse me. It does have a lip on it that gives it action, but nevertheless, it is a swim bait. I'm going to talk about specific situations for that when we get into that. Okay, so let's get into uh, the size aspect. We're going to get into size and then color with that. Now, one of the things when you're considering how big to go on a big swim bait. And when, you know, and you've got a range of like six to 10 inches or six to 12 inches, there's a couple different considerations that you've got to take into account before you decide which swim bait to use, the size. Now the number one size or the number one factor that you need to take in consideration is the body of water that you're fishing. 
for the most part, California, Texas, and Florida have all the big bass in the country. It's like the vast majority, I'm talking the vast majority of 10 pound class fish are caught in those three states. If you catch a 10 pound bass outside of Florida, <clears throat> Texas, or California, it's a very rare exception to the rule. That's, that's just where those big ones live. So when you're talking about throwing a really big one, you have got to be around a lake that has big fish in it in order for it to be very good or to have any action at all. Now, I don't mean it's got to be full of poor pounders, but it's got to have a, a, a population of quality fish when you throw the big ones. Now, we're going to talk first about this 10-inch Megabass Magdraft or any other similar big, big, giant swim bait, the biggest of the line there. So before you decide that, try to make a determination in the lake that you have how many quality fish are in it. Now, say for example, in my part of the country here uh, in the Ozarks, you know, we have some big bass here, but it's pretty rare to catch them anymore. It's like things have changed. Back 50 years ago, it used to take eight or nine pounds to win big bass in every tournament. And now most of the time, it takes five or six pounds to win big bass and big tournaments on all of our Missouri lakes here. So when you talk in terms of um, a lake that's got a decent amount of four pound class fish, this is still a giant bait for a four pound fish to hit. So even if you've got a lake, say for example, like Lake of the Ozarks here in Missouri that has a, a decent population of four pound class fish, you're still not gonna get many bites on this, guys. This is going to be highly situational with that. Now, the first thing that you have to remember, if you wanna catch a big one on a giant swim bait, is the conditions, and we're gonna talk a lot about conditions because they're swim, these big swim baits are very conditional weather-wise, but there's none more conditional than the big, anything over 10 inches long. When you're talking about fishing a swim bait that's over 10 inches long, you've got to have everything set up perfectly. You've got to have everything lined up perfectly. The first thing you have to do is you've got to throw it at the right time of year. When you're fishing the big giant ones, there's two, and I'll, I'll include also guys, I'll include the eight inch on this boat, the, the 10 inch and eight inch, they're very, very similar on this, but we'll mix it up a little bit with the six inch too, but um, the time of year is gonna be really critical. You got two windows when the bass are most apt to hit a giant swim bait. And one is in the late pre-spawn and the other is in the late fall time of the year. Those are the two windows. And when you're talking about windows, you're only talking like a, about a three week window, maybe a month at the very most out there when your percentages are really high to catch them on this big swim bait. Now the reason so, or excuse me, the reason that that is so is because first of all, in the pre-spawn period of the year, um, you're going to be uh, dealing with a lot of quality fish that are moving shallow, staging, getting ready to spawn. And we're gonna get into more at the end of, towards the end of the video, we're gonna get into specific areas to look for. But the main thing to remember on this is when you've got the biggest population of quality fish shallow, less than 10 foot of water, it is in the late pre-spawn. So you simply have more numbers of big fish that are gonna be in a zone to hit this. And then that other window, like I said, which is in the late fall time of the year, you have some type of a migration of these quality fish into shallow water once that water temperature starts getting sort of into the uh, mid 50s to mid 60s. You don't have the number of quality fish that are up in the, in the fall time of the year as you do in the pre-spawn, but you do have enough to create a window for the big one to work. So um, that's the main thing with that. So number one, you gotta be on the lake that's got quality fish. Number two, you gotta be there at the right time. Third factor, guys, is weather conditions. Weather conditions with a big swim bait it are more critical than any lure genre with the exception of possibly jerkbait fishing, but probably not as much. I, if I had to put weather conditions as far as affecting certain lure categories, I'd probably put big swim baits number one, followed up by jerk baits as far as how weather will um, determine your success, you know, by the mood and the personality that that weather creates for the bass. So the weather conditions and environmental conditions, you need this. Right leg that's got the quality fish, time of year, 
Next thing is water visibility. In order for these big giant ones to work, you can't have too dirty water and you can't have cl too clear of water. You've got to have just the right clarity window. And that clarity window, for the most part, is going to be into that four to eight foot range. Now, a lot of people will say, man, that's pretty clear. Why wouldn't this thing work in something, uh, you know, less than four, you know, four foot visibility? Not to say you couldn't catch one in it, but the reason is how those fish position. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video as far as they, where they position, because if you don't have this four to eight foot water clarity, the fish will not be positioned relative to the structure to actually strike that. So that's gonna be a big consideration with it. And the third and the final thing with that is the exact right set of weather conditions. The weather conditions for these big swim baits under those conditions, you've gotta have a couple different things. You've got to have a steady or falling barometric pressure, which is usually uh, usually means a cold front is somewhere on the way. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like intimate in, in, or intimate or imminent, but it's got to be a cold front is starting to approach. And normally, when you have that falling or stable barometric pressure, you're going to have that backed up by a south or southwest wind, which is also critical. That south and southwest wind has also has to it has to be at the right speed, and that wind speed for that is anything over like 15 miles an hour. You really need a windy day, like a 15 to 20 mile an hour wind is going to be perfect for this thing. And then on top of that, you've got to have some type of lower light levels, and I don't mean it has to be raining, but there needs to be some type of a day where you have a minimum. Of like some heavy cumulus clouds out there where like the the sun is just barely peeking through the clouds once in a while but a lot of times the clouds are covered up for this to work so here's the checklist on this big swim bait you can see why the wind is so small you got to be on the right lake you got to be there at the right time of year you got to have the right water clarity and you got to have the right um, weather conditions in order for this thing to work on top of you got to throw it on the right tackle and retrieve it right. So there's a lot of variables to that. Now, the point of what I'm talking about here, when we're talking about the ideal scenario, we're talking about to actually where a bait, a fish will eat this thing and, and actually eat it because the number one biggest, most frustrating, most common thing that you'll hear everybody talking about when they fish a big swim bait is bass following it. And if you fish a big swim bait or a big glide bait, which we're going to do video down the road on that, and you're in that clear water, even if you don't have the right conditions and the right scenarios, you're going to be reeling this thing through the water and you're going to have a lot of fish tracking it. And they'll, and they'll swim up from behind it and look at it. They may be 10 foot away, just they're curious about it like that. And, they will, and once in a while, they may just come up and bite the tail of it like that unless you have those right conditions. Now, like I said, if you don't have those exact right conditions, it, you're gonna be more susceptible to getting the followers and the fish that get its attention. But if you have those right set of conditions, um, they're a lot more apt to eat this thing with it. And now, also we're gonna, we're gonna talk about things you can do to help generate the strike when we get into the tackle, but right now I just wanna talk about the situational aspect of that. Now, the next one with that, Let's get into the eight inch a little bit, a little bit here too. Now the difference in the eight inch, it's still a significantly large piece of plastic, but it's bigger, a lot smaller than the 10 inch here. Now the eight inch, it op there's a little bit more, there's a few more windows that open up as far as when this thing is gonna work versus the 10 inch model. 10 inch model, if you, if you throw this thing right here, your average fish that hit this thing is gonna be four pounds at least. So as you go down in size, this thing is gonna be more appealing to a smaller fish. So when you're talking about an eight inch mag draft like this or an eight inch swim bait, now you're starting to appeal to the bass in that three pound range a little bit more. So your odds, the numbers of bass that you're gonna catch are gonna go up because you have a more diversity in size. So therefore, when you go to the eight inch size, which is still a large one, um, it opens up more lakes. So you don't, have, you don't necessarily have to be on one of those big fish lakes like in Florida, Texas, or California to catch a bass on a swim bait. Most lakes in the country will have a few bass in the lake that will hit an eight inch swim bait. So that's a good thing there. The next thing with that is you still have the, uh, 
the similar time windows, but those time windows are expanded a little bit. One of the things that you're gonna find when you start going down in size on your swim bait is that pre-spawn bite that occurs when those water temperatures in the 50s is going to last over into the post-spawn, the early part of the post-spawn. So let's say, for example, at the lake you're fishing, say in uh, the, 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 the end of March, the water temperature's in the upper 50s and you're starting to catch some fish, you know, on the eight inch swim bait here, you're gonna continue catching fish on that up until that water temperature starts to get into the mid 70s in up, you know, sometimes up into mid-May or something like that. Normally, the, it'll last a little bit about two to three weeks after the fish have had the major spawn on the lake. And then the same thing for the, the fall. You have pretty much that same fall window for this to work a little bit with it. Now, the thing about the eight inch size is you still want those same weather conditions to, to, to be optimum, but you don't necessarily have to have everything fall in line perfect with that because the, the smaller size a little bit, and again, we're gonna talk about it a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, later as far as the angles of attack, when you're fishing the smaller swim baits, you can fish shallower water, deeper water, and you can also fish water that is, has varying water clarity degree, water clarity uh, uh, visibility numbers. So, say for example, um, if the big swim, the big giant one here only works in four to eight foot of visibility, the smaller ones are going to work in like three to ten foot of visibility. And if you have to be, say for example, over deep water to catch one on the big one you don't have to be over as deep water to catch one on the eight inch size. You can actually, you know, target those fish that come horizontally for the bait rather than pulling them up out of deeper water like you do on the big one, which we'll talk about a little bit later there. So anyway, the eight inch is going to be a little bit more versatile with that. And then we'll go to the six inch and we'll get into the other two swim baits. The six inch, when you're going down to that, it even becomes more versatile because I've caught them on the six inch in anywhere between 12 inches of visibility and 20, 20 feet of visibility. It really opens up the, that particular area simply because it's not quite as a big of a commitment. Also, your weather conditions change a lot as far as specifically what you need for this. With the smaller one out there, I've caught them on sunny days. I've caught them if the wind is blowing five miles an hour, it doesn't have to be blowing 15 or 20. Um, you know, the water clarity is, like I said, a little bit more versatile, but since it is a smaller bait, it's going to trigger uh, strikes from bass that don't have to have those optimum conditions <clears throat> to actually eat this. And also, when you're dealing with the six inch size, you're now going to catch bass even down to 12 inches long on the thing. Still going to generate strikes from the bigger fish, but you're going to attract a lot, you're going to basically attract any bass that's over like a year old will hit a six inch swim bait with that. So really, really opens it up to, to being a lot more versatile. Now, the other two we're gonna talk about is the Kai Tech and the Mega Bait here, as far as the conditions with that. The Kai Tech here, I, and I, this is one of the things, for, sort of one of the benefits of this channel here, because you're getting some real specific info, but the benefit of the Kai Tech, again, you have a small window that this thing works in. The Kitek is going to work, and I've never seen anything that works so good like this. If you're on, a, if you have a grass flat, now say for example, if you're on a Texas lake, a TVA lake, wherever Florida, wherever you have grass, if you've got water depth that is under 10 feet, and you've got grass that is only growing up, not even halfway to the surface, where you have at least a five foot window between the surface and where the grass starts this thing is freaking money in the pre-spawn. It is a pre-spawn deal almost exclusively. After, once those fish move to the bank and get to the bed, I don't catch hardly anything on this. But as long as those um, fish are in those staging areas, those staging areas of those grass flats, you can slow roll this thing down in the pre-spawn and catch some giants on it. Now there is one other application for the big one that I use, this, this can be, an excellent structure bait during the late post-spawn and early summer. So say for example, if you guys fish Kentucky Lake and those fish get out on the ledges of Kentucky Lake, this is a great lure to fish out there. You're basically throwing it to the bottom, just crawling it just maybe six inches off the bottom on any deeper structure. I've caught a lot of good fish on that. In fact, personally, I've caught 
quite a few fish on this setup here at Table Rock, or excuse me, at Kentucky Lake in the month of June. <clears throat> and finally, the last one I'm gonna talk about, guys, is this, me not Mega Bass, this is a Mega Bait Charlie. This is, I don't even know if they make this thing anymore. It's called Mega Bait, M-E-G-A-B-A-I-T. But this, this may be discontinued, I'm not sure of that. But the difference on this is it is a soft body swim bait with a lip on it. So this thing runs like a crankbait and you can actually burn it as slow or as fast as you want. This is another grass bait here. I have hammered them on this thing on any shallow water grass lake, specifically in Florida. I mean, if you've got water conditions that the water visibilities of like uh, over three foot and shallow grass, they're gonna bite this thing. And gotta take one quick break here, guys. We'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Had to uh, put out a quick fire there. My wife came over and told me that one of our chickens had died this morning, so she was pretty upset about that. So I had to take a break from the video and deal with that. Okay, so anyway, guys, back to the uh, the mega bait here. Now, like I said, this is this is this bait has been exceptional for me in any type of shallow grass situation, specifically Florida. It's really, if you've got tannic water. Now, tannic water is sort of clear black water that's created by grass. And there's something about this thing, man, that I have just hammered them in the state of Florida on those same type of conditions. Wind, low light conditions, a little bit clearer water. And we're gonna get into exactly how I work this, these baits here just in a second, which are critical. First of all, guys, let's talk a little bit about colors. You know, colors are another critical element in swim bait fishing, in big swim bait fishing, simply because they are sight bait. I mean, big swim baits are not they, they, they're, the fish don't bite them because the, the, of the noise that they make or the water they displace or anything like that. They bite them because of the visual appeal of them. They're just, they look like real fish and that's what's gonna get them to strike it. So colors can be really critical. And again, colors are completely based upon environmental factors. Now, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple in colors here. I sort of wanna take talk about shades rather than specific colors because you guys can see if you go like to the Baitworks website, you can see all the different colors Mega Bass has or the ones Kytec has. They have a lot of different ones. But I like to think in terms of um, shades a little bit more to match the water clarity. So first of all, let's talk about one of the, the brighter colors, like a, a white or a pearl looking color here. Um, anytime you've got a brighter uh, bait like this type of a swim bait color, this is gonna give you the maximum vis visual uh, strike attractant as far as this, can, this is gonna be most visible in the water under a lot of different conditions. A pearl or white swim bait is going to glow a lot. So therefore um, it's gonna be really good on, under those days that you do have lower light conditions. Early and late in the day, you know, those dark, rainy, cloudy type days, or if the water is a little bit on the dirty side, this is, you, this is when you wanna use these colors. Now, the other ones would be more of a, of a subtle color, more of a, a natural looking tone. This is like, this is the one they call the nude rainbow. And it's almost sort of translucent. You can probably see my finger behind that a little bit. But these translucent nudes like this, these are actually my favorite. I've caught more fish on the translucent ones than any other colors. They're a little bit better under a little brighter conditions. Like you, you can have those days when the sun's popping out behind the clouds or maybe the wind's not quite as hard as you want it. Maybe that wind's is 10 or 12 miles an hour. It's a little bit brighter out. Um, and the translucent's gonna look, it's just gonna get more strikes, especially if the water's clear out there. Overall, guys, one of the things I found out about swim bait fishing is they, they bite the translucent colors a little bit better simply because they're more realistic looking so they can take a chance at it. But the bright ones, like the white and the pearls, what seems like they catch the bigger fish. So it's sort of a trade-off with that there. But those are the two basic ones there. And then you have some metal flake colors like this. Now the times that the metal flake like this, you have any type of flake in it like that, this is a color that you need to have the maximum amount of light in. So we were talking about the mag draft and the six inch size worked in a variety of different light conditions. I like this, the flake on this when I've got a sunny or a brighter, partly cloudy day because the sun will reflect off of that and there's something about it the bass like and they'll attack. So any, t any type of a swim bait that's got a flake on it is really good on, under those conditions with that. And one of the things that I, I can tell you about the uh, Kytec here, 
Um, I haven't noticed that much difference when you're using a shad pattern. Now the Kitex come in several different colors. They come, I think, I think I've got some here, but they've got um, some of the shad patterns and then they've also got some of the more, like the natural green pumpkins. Let me show you one of those, sort of like that. Um, I don't like these for the big swim baits. It's always got to be the shad pattern like this. So this is the, the one that I'll use, you know, over those deeper grass beds. And then finally the Mega Bait Charlie. Um, there's only a couple color options in it, but most of the one is sort of like this black gold, works really good in tannic water with that. So these are, those are the basic colors. So anyway, we've color, covered the bait, the bait profiles, the color. Um, now we're gonna get into the retrieves and the equipment. So I'm gonna take a real quick break, get something to drink, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, let's get into the really important aspect that actually triggers strikes with these big swim baits once you do have the right color and you've got the right size picked out. Because once you do have uh, everything in line for you know what is gonna be the optimum color and size for it, the next thing is you've got to understand how to manipulate and create action and to generate a strike through your, your tree because that is so critical. And if there's one thing that separates the top level big swim bait fishermen over anyone else is they under, understand retrieve and cadence better than other people. So we're gonna get into that. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about the equipment because the equipment is a little bit specialized with it. Um, first of all, on the big ones, on the eight and 10 inch ones, I use the Seaguar 25 pound test in Vizex fluorocarbon line. And if, as I go down in size, like I go down to the six inch here, I may go down to anywhere between 15 to 20 pound tests, Seaguar and Vizex line, and the same with the uh, Kitek. The Kitek is usually fished, you know, the same as the six inch mag draft. So for the most part, I'm using, um, you know, a minimum of 15 and a maximum of 20, 25. And I always use 25 on the eight and 10 inch size. You don't need to use anything else out there. I've heard of some guys using braided line. I don't like it because it's really visible and you do need a little bit of about, little bit about a little bit of stretch with it. And some guys actually, I've heard them use 30 pound test mono um, on the really big ones, but I've, it seems like to me the 25 pound test has been really, really good with that. Now, the next thing, probably one of the most important aspects about it is your rod. And there's two different rods I use, guys. For the six inch size, the six inch mag draft and the mega bait and the Kitek, I use the Mega Bass Levante Alcles. Um, this is a seven foot, uh, 10 inch flipping stick. It's the same rod that I used to flip with. And it has just the perfect length and perfect action. It's, just, it's got a medium heavy tip on it. Just a typical, you know, nice flipping stick. And this will handle those six inch size swim baits perfectly. They cast it absolutely perfectly with that. And the reel I use is not the right one, guys. If you're gonna be serious about big swim bait fishing, you've gotta beef your reel up. This is just the Lose BB1, which is fine for like a six inch mag draft, but if you're throwing the bigger size on there, you're going to have to upsize your reel to a lower gear ratio and a larger spool on there, simply because to handle the weight of that bait. I mean, this, is, this bait weighs six ounces, so, you can imagine trying to cast that with just a regular bait casting tackle. But for the six inch models, uh, just your, your regular flipping stick will be fine. If you guys don't have the Mega Bass um, Alkalis on there, um, like I said, you can just use whatever flipping stick that you've got. Also guys, these rods, Baitworks also has these rods if you're interested in them. Now the rod that you want to use for the big ones, the eight and 10 inch ones is not the flipping stick because if you try to throw this 10 inch uh, mag draft, on a flipping stick, it, it is so heavy when you cast it, it'll feel like your rod wants to break. So you've got to beef up. So the rod that I use with that is this is the eight foot Mega Bass Leviathan Oroshi. This is a super heavy, super stiff rod that can handle those six inch baits. It's eight foot long. So it's, I mean, you could probably ocean fish with that. And again, I've just got the wrong reel on here. This is the only reel that I've got. So I make them work. If, if I'm throwing a big bait, I just have to make these work because I don't have the bigger ones. But again, if you're serious about it, go down and get a larger reel with something like a 5.1 to retrieve ratio. Uh, the lose I use have seven to one, which makes it pretty tough to retrieve those big ones. But a lower, gear, a lower gear ratio, larger diameter spool reel will be good if you're fishing those eight or 10 inches, 10 inches a lot. But you do need that extra power with that. So now that we got the equipment, 
let's talk about the really important aspect, which is the retrieve and how you want to fish these things. Now, one of the things about big swim baits is, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the areas that you fish them in, which is relative to this. But quickly with that, you've got two different aspects to consider. And the aspect is the mood and the personality of the fish and where they're coming from. Because when you're dealing with these big swim baits, depending upon the depth of the water that you're fishing, the fish are either gonna come horizontally on the bait or they're gonna come up from the bottom vertically. And that has a big impact on how you wanna retrieve the bait and actually the type of bait you're using. But for the most part, guys, with the big swim bait, um, unless you're fishing it around targets, if you're fishing it around open water areas, which we do a lot uh, with big swim baits, open water grass and open water points, is basically just make your long cast out there, point the rod tip straight at the swim bait. This is, this is one of the most critical parts of it. You don't want to put your rod to the side. Cast it out there and point the rod straight to the swim bait and just begin like a slow, maybe a medium retrieve. The, the speed that you want on it is just as fast enough to get the tail wiggling on that thing. You don't want to reel it too slow where the tail doesn't wiggle because if you reel it too slow, it's not going to wiggle. And if you, rig it too, if you reel it too fast, it's going to go on its side. A swim bait, almost, there's not really any swim bait out there that's designed like this that will run straight on a fast retrieve that's going to go off to the side. So the main thing is to get those big ones to hit it is just the medium retrieve like that, a slow medium retrieve. But the big key guys is you've got to learn the half turn. And the half turn, if, if, if there's one thing that you're gonna take away from this whole video that's gonna help you out with the big swim bait is learning the half turn. Because the half turn is where at least 75% of your strikes are gonna occur. So you've made the long cast out there, you're reeling it, you know, straight like that, about every five or six, like one, two, three, four, five, half turn fast, like that. And all it is, it's just, it's, it, you're just slow retrieve and you're speeding it up for a half a turn like that. And what happens is that swim bait is going through the water like this, coming all, all of a sudden, you do a half turn and it goes just like that. And that will trigger the strike from the fish that are following it because if you throw this thing, guys, if you're on a main lake point and you throw a big swim bait out there and the water's pretty clear, I can promise you there's fish looking at it. They may be two foot away from your bait, they may be 20 foot away from your boat, but if you're in clear water and you throw this thing out there on a point where fish live, they're gonna be, they're gonna, it's gonna get their attention over there. And the half turn is the thing that generates the strike when they're following the bait. So. In other words, you've got this bass, it, you know, the, the lures hit the water, it's made the splash. So as soon as, this, as soon as this thing hits the water and makes a splash, if there was a bass 50 feet away, that bass is gonna dart over there to investigate. Now, how close that bass gets to the swim bait is dependent upon all those factors we talked about, weather conditions, water visibility, all that type of stuff. But if you get one of those bass to come in close to it like that, and they're hot, and they're in, a, they're in an aggressive mode, and they're really, really curious about this thing, and they're all around it, if they follow that thing, and they're looking at it, and you give it that half turn like that, that is usually when that strike occurs, almost every time. Like I said, the best thing that I found out about it is like a real, you're real like five times, give it a half turn out there. And in order for that half turn to work, you've got to be pointing the rod tip straight at the bait. If your rod tip is off to the angle and you do a half turn like that, it doesn't work the same. By having that bait right in line with the rod tip and you do the half turn like that, there's no flex in the rod tip. All you're doing is the bait is reacting to the line with no impediments on it. And there's just something about it that will generate that strike with it. Now, that is the way that I fish it most all the time. Now, the rod angle also has a lot to do based upon, you know, the type of structure that I'm fishing because I don't always fish it in open water. One of my favorite things to do with the mag draft is like to pitch it like, like a jig around boat docks. So I'll just pitch it just like I would a jig and 
sometimes you have to hold your rod tip high or low. You know, a lot of times, you know, the mag draft is versatile. I've caught them in two foot of water on it. So I may throw it out there on the bank and keep my rod tip high and just reel it like that with the half turn. The higher that you're gonna have your rod tip, the higher that that bait's gonna ride in the water column. And then sometimes I'm throwing it out there and over deep water and I just count it down. I, I'll, I'll let the thing sink to the bottom sometime. If the water's 20 foot deep, I'll let it sink all the way to the bottom and then just slowly start my retrieve with the rod tip low to the water. But one of the things that you're gonna find about generating that strike initially is that retrieve and getting that retrieve right. But just as important as generating that strike is catching the fish that are hot on the bait at the boat. Because what happens in my experience with big swim bait fish a lot of times is this lure hits the water way out here and it starts down and, it's, and it levels off and it's starting this. At this point, you have the attention of the fish. Now what happens as this bait gets closer to the boat, it starts to come up towards the boat like this. And this is when a lot of the strikes occur. It's like you're reeling that bait and it's getting, it's coming up like that. It's getting closer to the boat and maybe the fish thinks it's getting ready to get away or whatever, but you will get the bass will follow and get closer to this bait. The closer it gets to your boat as it, ascends at a 45 degree angle up there. And once you see that, and you've got a hot fish at the boat, that is when you have to adjust your retrieve again. And you have to do a couple different things. Number one, if, you, if you're if you reeling this, this swim bait back and you're watching it, come, maybe the, the bait's 10 or 15 foot away from the boat, and all of a sudden here comes a fish behind it like that, you have got to start speeding it, just go, just start reeling it fast like that. And it doesn't matter what's going to happen is when you reel it fast, it's going to go up on its side all crazy. Don't worry about that. You have got to speed that boat, that bait up when you see that fish, because that fish can't have any time to, to, to analyze or react. It's like if that fish is right next to this thing and it's getting close to the bait as it's coming up, they have to make a, a split second decision whether to turn away or eat that thing. And if you speed it up, even if it goes cockeyed sideways, a lot of times that fast speed up will generate that strike because they don't want that thing to get away. And this is, this is why a lot of people don't catch half the fish that other people catch on a swim bait is because what happens a lot of times is they'll see a fish behind it and they'll slow the bait up like they want the fish to catch up with it. And then they never get a bite because the fish gets too good of a look at it. So you have got to speed that bait up big time. And it's even more important on the bigger sizes. The bigger the bait, the faster you have to retrieve it when you see a fish behind it. And then finally guys with that is when, if you've got a fish that's hot and all over that bait, and a lot of times you'll have one or two or sometimes three fish following it, do the figure eight. It's like, even if you've got two foot of line out, just take the tip of your rod and just, and just, and just go like this, just go like this with it all, all the way around the boat, just like that. And you're just, what you're doing is you're figure eight in it. And this lure is just going like this all around the boat. It's just all crazy looking like they do in salt water. A lot of times you'd be surprised how many times those fish will hit it with two foot of, of line out on there. So, um, that is another thing that you just sort of have to understand about that. So anyway, guys, that's the, the basic uh, practical aspects of it. Now we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about exactly what you need to look for as far as areas where you want to fish at different times of the year. So we'll be right back with that. Okay, guys, now we're back for the uh, meat and potatoes part of the video here. We're going to talk about where you want to fish it at type of areas because that's that's the whole deal about it. It's like if you're if you're not throwing it around where the fish are at, you're not going to catch any fish at all on it. So you got to definitely be in the right areas with this. So first of all, let's talk about the big. We'll talk about the giant ones, the eight and ten inches first, and then we're going to go back to the six inch the six inch model because the places that you fish them in are completely different, in my opinion, with that, and uh, you know different times of the year. So when we talk about the eight inch, I'm going to um, relegate it basically to the 
pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn. That would be the one period, and the second period would be the fall, like we talked about. So, as far as the winter time and summer, I'm not saying you can't catch them on it, but I've just never caught, caught nothing on them hardly. Is during those windows. So this is what you want to look for on the eight to ten inch or even bigger swim baits, as far as where that you're fishing at. And I know a lot of this has to do with the you know the type of lake that you're fishing, but for the most part, I'm going to try to keep it centered around impoundments and that type of deal. The first thing that you have to understand about the big swim bait out there is there's there's a reality in fishing that I have discovered that the bigger the lake is, the bigger the lure the fish will hit, and the smaller the lake is, the smaller lures they like. Say, for example, you know, if you guys fish farm ponds, I used, you know, I used to have a 40-acre lake myself, and I used to fish ponds forever, and I fished some smaller, like 500,000-acre lakes. A general rule, not all the time, but a general rule is the smaller the lake, the smaller the bait is. So, when you're fishing these big swim baits, you're going to do better on those bigger lakes, unless you're fishing like one of those trout filled lakes in California that are small. That's an exception to the rule. But what you're looking for with that is you've got to have a deep water access on a big swim bait. You, you are not going to catch hardly nothing on those things. If you try fishing it around shallow water that does not have access to deep water, because the thing that I have found about them is you have to pull the fish up from the bottom to get them to commit to this thing. Now I can get some fish to follow those big swim baits if the water's shallower, but I can't hardly get them to ever bite them. So for the most part, when you're talking about those big swim baits, the areas that you're fishing need to be limited to those places that not necessarily are deep themselves, but the deep water is right there close to them. And obviously the best place is gonna be some type of main lake or secondary point. If you've got a main lake or secondary point and you've got clear water, you've got a couple different things going on. You've got fish on the bottom in varying depths, and you also have some suspended fish out. So probably one of my favorite things to do with the big swim baits is to get out on these main lake and secondary points where I've got water visibility of over four foot clarity, and I get my boat out and say 25 to 30 foot of water, and I simply just fan cast everywhere out there. I just bomb cast out all over the place. Since I don't live scope, that's the way I have to do it. So depending upon, again, the water temperature and the condition, that type of stuff, sometimes you may throw it out there and just start reeling it right in. Sometimes you may want to let it sink four or five feet. Um, if you're throwing up shallow on the point, I'll just throw it out there and start reeling it in because it'll gradually start sinking a little bit as I move it. And if I throw it out in open water on the deeper part of it, I may count down to five or 10 and start reeling it in. But the, the advantage of that deep water like that is like I said, you're pulling those fish off the bottom to hit that. And a lot of times that is when they commit to it. They dart out off the bottom and crash that thing and bite it. But if you come shallow with that thing, let's say for example, instead of fishing the point, I went back into the cove and started fishing and I just started casting it down the bank. Yeah, it may attract a few fish out of that shallower water, but I can't even hardly remember any times that I've ever caught any on it. Now, the only exception to that is going to be on a grass lake. Now, grass lakes are a minority in this country. As far as the lakes that we have grass are far few, fewer than what we have rock and timber in this country. But if you are fishing grass lakes, that is an exception to the rule because you can fish shallower water and those fish will stage and ambush that thing out of the grass. So that's sort of a little bit different environment. But anyway, you gotta have that deep water access and the points are gonna provide that. The other two areas that you wanna look for are channel banks and bluffs and what I call ditches and guts. Now what this is, is everybody knows what a bluff is and everybody, if, if you're watching this channel, you probably know what a bluff is or channel bank. And this is an area where, you know, the, the creek channel or main river channel swings in close to the bank and it drops off pretty quick and you've got some pretty deep water. It's the same with that. One of my favorite techniques for fishing a big one is I get on those bluffy banks, not necessarily vertical walls, but just steep bluff banks and make long casts parallel down the bank, anywhere between five to 20 foot off the bank, depending upon if the lake has any submergent timber or how clear the water is really, really good way to catch them like that. And then the other one is the ditches. 
And the ditches seem to work really good on lakes that have a lot of blueback herring in them. So if you guys fish a lot in the southeast, this is something you want to remember. But what I usually do for that is I'll get on some of those bigger coves, smaller creeks on the lower end of the lake, and I idle back about two thirds of the way back in the in these coves until my water depth starts to get 30 to 40 foot. And once that water hits 30 to 40 foot, as long as I still have four foot of visibility, I'll, I'll bomb a cast right down the middle of the cove and let it sink down to the depth that I'm noticing any bait fish activity. Cause a lot of times you'll see shad schools suspended in those ditches, depending upon the time of year. And I pay close attention to that. And sometimes I'll throw it out in those ditches. And if they're standing timber, I'll try to keep it over the tops of the standing timber, however deep down that may be. And some places like Lake Lanier in Georgia, you have a lot of brush or deeper, you know, uh, submergent timber down towards the bottom. And sometimes I'll let it go to the bottom with that. But ditches, points, and bluffs are going to be your primary areas with the big swim baits. Now, the little swim baits, guys, it opens up the whole lake. It's like when you're talking about, and I don't mean little swim, I'm talking about the littler big swim baits. I don't want to say six inch swim bait is not a little bait, but when you're talking about the smaller big swim baits, you have to look at them just like any other lure because at that point, once they get to six inches long, they become target lures. So when I'm fishing a, a six inch swim bait, I fish at the same places in the same way that I would um, like a chatter bait or a spinner bait or a jig. If there's a row of stumps, I'll fish it around the stumps. If there's some shallow grass, I'll throw it there. If there's some boat docks, I'll toss it around the boat docks. If there's a lay down tree, I'll throw it in the limbs around the lay down tree. Same thing as like a spinner bait with that. And the technique and how you want to fish like that is dependent upon the seasonal pattern. Now, once you start getting into the six inch models, it opens the season up a little bit more because the six inch models are still going to be good um, in the spring, in the pre-spawn, spawn, and early post-spawn, but they're also going to work a little bit um, into the early part of the summer up into June. And one of the things that I found that I, the best days I've had on these six inch swim baits, so in other words, I'm talking about the days that I've caught really good bags on them and not just had fish fall on them, but actually caught them, is when you got flooded cover in June. Now, now June is a pretty common month where lakes flood out and get high. And if I had, if, if there was one situation I could tell you guys that if you wanted to get bit on a big swim bait, how to do it, it would be go to your, go to your favorite lake during the post spawn in May or June when the water's, you know, flooded three to four or five foot over normal. <clears throat> when those fish get in that flooded cover, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, they'll position on the edges of that cover and those six inch swim baits will draw them out really good. Another time the six inch swim bait works really good guys is during the shad spawn. Shad spawn a lot in this part of the, all around the country, like in May and June. So anytime you need, you see shad spawning next to a riprap bank or next to a boat dock or next to a rocky bank or a bridge pier, make sure you throw that six inch swim bait around that uh, shad spawning areas. It's gonna work really good. But really after about, um, say the third week of June, there's a big die off. They just, they, har they, they won't hardly ever bite it in the middle of the summer with the exception of maybe fishing the six inch uh, Kitek on the bottom, same way you would with like a football head jig. But then again, the window starts up again, uh, specifically in October and November. In October and November, this is my, without a doubt, my favorite time of year to fish them besides the flooded cover because you have a lot of those, um, not necessarily big ones, but you got a lot of quality fish that are moving up shallow in October and November, and they are super, super weather sensitive. It's like, if you've got a lake that you fish and, and it's October, say middle to late October, maybe into November, and that water temperature is starting to get down around upper 50s, around 60 degrees, and you have a cloudy, windy day, Guys, there's gonna be fish all over the bank in a situation like that. And you can just burn the bank, man. You can just get in any major creek arm of the lake and fish points, cove back ends, rocky banks, whatever. Just get down there and cover water almost like you would with a buzz bait. It's just a great time to fish it. So I look forward to that every year. That's that's my that's probably the funnest time to catch them because there's so many fish up shallow, you know, 
that will buy it that, at that time of year. But anyway, guys, um, every lake, every part of the country is going to be unique to its own on that. Um, swim bait fishing is something that it's a uh, it's not for everybody. It's it's really not simply because there's it's a it's a it, it, you you put in a lot of work for very little reward on the thing. Is I, I guess what I'm saying. It's like when you're talking about true big swim baits, specifically like the seven to ten inch models out there. Um, it's like somebody that's like a trophy deer hunter or something like that. I mean, it's like they may go for years without seeing one they want to, you know, take a shot at. And it's the same with, you know, fishing a big swim bait. I mean, you may go, you may go for five or six trips without getting a bite on one. And then all of a sudden you catch the biggest fish of your life on it on the next trip. But the thing that keeps you after it and the thing that why I still have so many of them here in my tackle room is that when you see some of the size of bass that will follow that thing, it will hook you. It'll, it'll, it'll just, you'll, you'll become an addict of it. I, we were fishing the BFL tournament at Tabor Rock this year. And, um, I had a limit of fish pretty early, but they didn't weigh much. And I put the big swim bait on and I started fishing. And the first two places I stopped, I had like six to seven pound bass, just one, one six to seven pound bass on the first stop and another one about that same size on the second stop that followed the bait to the boat and was that far away from it. So when you see these giant bass that are an inch away from your swim bait, you just tell yourself, it's like, they're going to bite this. I got to keep throwing it. I'm not going to get that size of a bite on any lure out there. And that's what's keeps you, that's what keeps you throwing the thing. So... Anyway, I hope that gives you guys a foundation with it. Um, like I said, that's we're going to do a lot of swim bait videos, but this is one that's probably going to use be used the least amongst people because a lot of people just don't have the patience for it. But if you want to have a shot to catch the biggest bass you've ever caught, I mean, there's not going to be a better way for you guys to do it than these big swim baits. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the seminar, and we'll talk later.